By November 1944, after more than five years of war, the once seemingly unstoppable momentum of the German Wehrmacht was waning. Across Europe, the tides of battle were turning, and the iron grip of control was slipping from the fingers of the German High Command. But on the borderlands of Germany, the struggle was far from over. Before the Allies could push into Berlin, their advance required securing a pathway through the Hürtgen Forest, a natural fortress that had become the site of some of the war's most brutal engagements. In this unforgiving terrain, Lieutenant Friedrich Lingfeld, a young commander recently tapped to lead the Wehrmacht unit, was ordered to maintain the upper hand against elements of the famed U.S. 22nd Infantry Regiment. After a long night of military operations, the sunrise gave way to a short silence. But this was suddenly halted by the cry of a man pleading for help in English. Inching closer to get a better look, Lingfeld saw that sprawled out on the ground of no man's land was a lonesome American soldier. Injured and scared, he'd clearly been left behind. Initially, Lingfeld chose to ignore the American. But after hours of persistent calls for help, which would stir compassion in even the most hardened soldiers, Lieutenant Friedrich Lingfeld decided to do what only a few soldiers dare, help the enemy. As the Allies advanced through Europe after the D-Day invasion in June 1944, their momentum, while inspiring, quickly began to outpace their logistical capabilities. Their territorial gains extended past northern France and, by September, the border of Germany. The supply lines stretching over 400 miles back to Normandy could not keep up with the demand for resources and reinforcements. With this logistical strain, the Allies were forced to slow down their drive toward Nazi Germany, despite being so close to enemy territory. War planners realized that the supply chain was not their only problem. Before advancing into Berlin, they had to cross the Rhine River, deal with the siege-resistant city of Aachen, and the threat of Germans destroying the Ruhr Dam. To preempt such an event and secure a crucial tactical advantage, the top brass chose to instead navigate through the challenging terrain of the Hürtgen Forest, located between Aachen and the dam, racing against time to forestall any German efforts to compromise the dam's structural integrity. But this relatively brief pause in the fighting gave the Germans around the forest time to regroup, resupply, and rest. Additionally, the Nazis loaded the area's hills and ravines with minefields, booby traps, barbed wire, and anything else they could think of that might mitigate their enemy's advance. Deep within the forest was another hidden advantage. Inside this natural barrier was an actual concrete one, the Siegfried Line. Germany erected a concrete line of fortifications the decade prior along the French border to protect from a potential attack. It was now the last major line of defense on the Western Front. With this blockade and the unlikely Allied air superiority due to the trees, the Germans knew the dark Hürtgen forest was almost impenetrable. Still, the Americans, closer than ever to their objective of capturing Berlin, were willing to try. Beginning on September 19, 1944, the United States Army, commanded by Generals Omar Bradley and Courtney Hodges, and 120,000 men were sent into this German-held meat grinder. As the Americans attempted to dislodge the Nazis from the forest and the Siegfried Line, the defending German side, led by Field Marshal Walter Model, numbered 80,000, held back as long as they could, with a much stronger supply flow. For four months, both sides fought viciously well into the winter, where troops wore each other out in the region's thick forests and steep but narrow paths. The Battle of Hürtgen Forest remains among the most catastrophic battles of World War II for the U.S. Army. While telling of his experiences fighting in the forest, Ernest Hemingway once wrote that, quote, whoever survived Hürtgenwald must have had a guardian angel on each of his shoulders. After two months of fighting, the Battle of Hürtgen Forest had become a brutal and prolonged engagement. There, American forces faced fierce resistance from the German troops, deeply entrenched in fortified positions. Daily fighting often consisted of intense close-quarters combat, with both sides suffering casualties through artillery barrages, minefields, and booby traps. Among the thousands of Germans trying to keep the Americans from advancing was Lieutenant Friedrich Lengfeldt, a 23-year-old German Wehrmacht infantry officer who had just taken command of the 2nd Company of the Divisional Fusilier Battalion of the Wehrmacht's 275th Infantry Division, following the loss in combat of their previous commander. 
The lieutenant and his men were stationed in the thick of the Hurtgen Forest, well within the northern Eiffel region, holed up inside a forester's house, sheltering themselves from the elements and trying to stave off their hunger. Next to their shelter was a notorious minefield known as Ville de Zau. Because of these key locations, Langfeld's unit was under intense combat at all hours. But the leader, known for never asking more of his men than he was willing to do, often took the lead on patrols, putting their safety above his time and time again. The Wehrmacht unit fortified their position early in November, creating defenses from the Vildezau minefield to the nearby road, ready to repel their enemy, the United States Army's 22nd Infantry Regiment. Beginning combat on D-Day on the beaches of Normandy, the 22nd Infantry had spent the last few months valiantly advancing across France. With their advance halted by the mines, they turned their eyes toward the cabin. During the first week of November, the battlefront fluctuated, with the Americans and Germans exchanging control over key positions several times. Whenever an American attack pushed Lengfeld and his men from their shelter, the Germans would quickly counterattack and retake it less than 24 hours later. As these battles raged back and forth, the men on both sides fought exhaustively in the cold and wet terrain, tramping through the mud on empty stomachs. All the while, casualties continued to rise. At noon on November 10th, the German commanders made their latest attempt to push the Americans back by whatever means available, opening a half-hour heavy artillery bombardment targeting their positions. For the next day, control of strategic points like the Forester's House shifted consistently, with the Americans briefly retaking it in the last hours of the 11th, but again being repulsed by the Germans in the morning. In the heat of the moment, the U.S. Army troops scrambled out so fast that one soldier walked right into the Ville de Zau, immediately stepping on a mine. But against all odds, the man survived, and as dawn broke on the morning of November 12, 1944, he began calling for help. As the sun rose on yet another day of battle at the Hurtgen Forest, Lieutenant Lengfield suddenly heard screams of pain and calls for help along a nearby road. Upon getting closer, he found an American soldier lying in no man's land, between the two opposing infantry formations, trapped in the middle of endless landmines. Immediately, Lieutenant Langfeld orders his men not to shoot any American medic or rescue personnel that came to the aid of the wounded soldier. Like many other Wehrmacht soldiers, Friedrich had already seen significant action on the Eastern Front, witnessing the horrors and heartlessness of war every day for years. He couldn't allow one more act of violence on an already weakened man. But as the hours passed, nobody came, and the downed man's pleas for help continued throughout the morning. As the cries weakened, it became clear to Lengfeld that he'd been left behind by his unit during a retreat, as there was no American nearby. With this, he knew that if left alone in that open place, he would for sure pass away, either from his wounds or the muddy cold. After hours of this, Lengfeld no longer heard the voice of an enemy. It was the voice of a fellow human, scared and in pain. Lieutenant Lengfeld turned to Private Hubert Gaze, his communications runner and aide, and told him he decided to help the American man. He then ordered his own medics to prepare for a rescue operation. Of course, as was his style, he would lead the team himself. Under an improvised Red Cross banner and vests, the team prepared their supplies and started following their leader, who guided them slowly down the road toward the wounded soldier. While Lengfeld successfully navigated his men through the relatively easy-to-spot anti-tank mines, he did not know the location of the hidden anti-personnel mines spread across Ville de Zau. But determined to reach the wounded soldier, Lengfeld personally took a step to cross the road to where the American was. Immediately, however, Lieutenant Lengfeld stepped on an anti-personnel mine, and a loud explosion erupted as the German rescue team looked on in horror, shock, and sadness. Now, the young German soldier was also moaning in pain. Severely wounded by shrapnel, the medics quickly but carefully dressed his wounds and rushed him to a medical aid station located in Lucas Mill, Hürgenwald. After first aid was done to dress his wounds, Lengfeld was transferred to another unit, Freitzheim. But it was too late, and that evening, hours after he took his last determined step, Lieutenant Friedrich Lengfeld drew his last breath and succumbed to his injuries, just two weeks away from his 24th birthday. All the men of the 2nd Company were shocked at the loss of their 2nd Commander in only a few months. 
Langfeld had done the unthinkable in a time of war, giving up his own life for the chance of rescuing one of his enemies. According to Hubert Gaze, who by then had become more of a friend rather than his aide at the company, quote, With Lieutenant Langfeld, I lost the best superior I ever had. In the previous hard weeks, he meant much to me and gave me a lot of inner strength. He was an exemplary company leader. When the Germans recaptured the field on the following day, they found no wounded or dead Americans at that location. The identity and fate of the wounded American, for whom Lieutenant Lengfeld gave up his life, remains unknown. The man was either rescued by another team or managed to return to friendly lines safely. Following the courageous acts of Friedrich Lengfeld on November 12th, the Battle of Hurtgen Forest continued its grim course. By December, the Allied forces shifted their focus towards the Battle of the Bulge, which drew resources and attention away from the Hurtgen Forest and was much more successful. The fighting in the forest effectively ended in February 1945, when the Americans finally pushed through to the Rhine River after the Battle of the Bulge. While a strategic victory for the Germans, the win at Hurtgen Forest was a Pyrrhic victory due to the heavy casualties and resources expended by both sides. The event marked the longest single land battle by the U.S. Army and the longest single land battle of the war on German soil. In only a few months, the Americans suffered up to 55,000 casualties, while the German defenders lost 28,000. Despite the high cost, the battle laid the groundwork for subsequent operations, albeit with the Allies reassessing their approach due to the heavy toll and tactical stalemates experienced. And while the war continued for months, the United States Army's 22nd Infantry was grateful for the November 12th act of selflessness by a Wehrmacht lieutenant. In 1994, American members of the 22nd Infantry erected a monument at the Hurtgen Forest Cemetery, bearing the name and wartime deeds of Wehrmacht Lieutenant Friedrich Langfeld. The monument, in addition to a summarized version of events in both English and German, reads, quote, No man hath greater love than he who layeth down his life for his enemy. The memorial in honor of Friedrich Lengfeld remains the only American memorial erected anywhere to honor the act of a German soldier. <laughs>